All right, so now I'm going to talk about uh, signaling factors um, with resistance training. And then after I talk about that, I'm going to make a shift and I'm going to tie resistance training and endurance training together and talk about some of the um, potential hazards of doing both at the same time and how they could limit performance. Okay, so starting with resistance training, don't even pay attention to this over here, okay? So starting with resistance training, here's my guy lifting weights, all right? Um, the primary factor or signal that is going to be for resistance training is the um, muscle stretch. Now you can even look at the muscle stretch as the amount of force. How much force is being put on the muscle um, determines what it needs to do in um, regards to performance. So resistance training primary signal is the muscle stretch. How much force is put on that muscle, okay? So, we have our force, we have our muscle stretch, and it's going to lead to our three secondary signals, IGF, AKT, and MTOR, okay? Now, IGF is pretty much like your growth factor, okay? And it comes from active muscle fibers. So if you're lifting and doing weights, your fibers are contracting, so it's going to release IGF, okay? Well... IGF is then going to leave and go to the actual muscle membrane or cell, whichever you want to call it, and it's going to activate AKT. Uh, there's not really a lot about this in the book, but um, just know that it's a coexisting factor that leads to um, MTOR, which is where I'm going to go next. So AKT activates um, MTOR. Now he is important because he promotes protein synthesis, and that's, what's, that's what we want. When we're um, doing our resistance training, we're tearing our muscles apart, we're tearing the fibers. Um, we need to replenish them. We need protein synthesis so they can get back and come back stronger so we can have bigger gains and eventually lead to muscle hypertrophy, okay? That would be our muscles getting bigger, all right? Now, as we're doing resistance training um, and we finally get the muscle hypertrophy, what it's gonna do is it's gonna increase our number of myonucleides. So you're probably wondering what that is, and I'm gonna draw them on these muscle fibers. So our, our muscle, our myonucleotide, are pretty much just our, if you wanna call them, cells that are in between the sarcolemma and outer connective tissue layer. So you could say that this would be a myonuclei, here would be a myonuclei, and here would be a myonuclei. Now, they're going to be all over the muscle fibers. Now, what um, hypertrophy does is that since a myonuclei can only manage so much muscle um, fiber mass, that when we have an increase in our fiber, it also increases our number of myonucleo, um, myonucleotides. So um, let's say that this is you before training, and now we're getting bigger, we're getting stronger. Now we're just adding more. We're adding more myonuclei because we're getting stronger and our fibers are getting bigger and our myonucleo, uh, myonuclei have to keep up with the fibers, okay? Now, I'm gonna switch gears and I'm gonna talk about endurance and I'm gonna talk about why this could be a problem and could jeopardize your uh, resistance training performance, okay? So, I already I skipped the primary signals for endurance because I just did a video about that, and um, I just put AMP, AM, PK, CAMK, and P38, and just showing that it had the master enzyme PGC, which would lead to mitochondrial biogenesis. Okay, now here's one of the primary factors why endurance training and resistance training at the same time isn't really. Um, I don't know how you want to say it. It's kind of frowned upon, but it's not all this uh, research isn't um, conclusive. So what's going to happen is since our endurance training is going to stimulate the enzyme AMPK and it helps with our myochondrial uh, biogenesis, um, what it's also going to do, it's going to stimulate, I'm going to bring him here. Let me see if I can get it right. It's going to be our T S C one two. Let me make sure I got that right. Yes, I did. Okay. 
Now, since we stimulated this, so let's say that we went for a long run one day. Well, this is going to get produced, okay? Let's say the next day we're going to do our resistance training. Well, what this guy does is TSC12 inhibits MTOR, which helps promote our protein synthesis. So, if we do our resistance training, we might not be able to rebuild our muscles as quickly or our fibers because we just blocked our enzyme that's needed to stimulate our protein synthesis, which would lead to our muscle hypertrophy. So, if we inhibit that, we might not have as much hypertrophy as we would if we did resistance training alone. Okay? Now, a couple of other factors that um, go hand in hand with resistance and endurance and the problems with it are that you can deplete your mus uh, muscle glycogen levels. So you go for a long run, you only have a certain amount of glucose that you can use before tapping into your muscle glycogen stores. It's just glucose stored in your muscles. Those get depleted because you're running for hours. The next day you're doing resistance training, you don't have that energy in your muscles to help you um, put out more force. So that could lead to a decrease in performance and um, strength during that actual resistance training um, session and could just lead to poor performance and um, less hypertrophy. Um, another factor is, and a big factor, endurance training, we go from type 2 to type 1 fiber shift, okay? We want our type 1s for endurance because they're more oxidative. They can hold more oxygen. Resistance training, we want type 2 fibers because we want that explosive so we can lift that weight off the floor or off the bench, however you want or whatever you lift. So it's kind of like a counterbalance of fiber shift. So the fibers don't know what's going on and so you're training it for one way and then you're training it for another and it's just a big mess. So problems for doing both, endurance training activates TSC12 which inhibits MTOR, that's a big one, our muscle fiber change and then we have our, um, I just lost it, glycogen stores, loss of glycogen stores, sorry. So. TSC12 inhibits MTOR. We have our fiber shifts from one direction to the other, and then our glycogen stores are de uh, depleted. And then there's some hormonal factors, but I'm not going to talk about that.